Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. I am in Conway, South Carolina, visiting Conway Ford, and I'm checking out a 2017 Ford Fusion. And this is the SE trim level, and it's an EcoBoost. So we've got a turbo under the hood, so that's good news. So, really interesting vehicle, has lots of cool features. Let's go ahead and check it out. Here on the side, we have 17-inch alloy wheels painted silver. And this vehicle has four-wheel disc brakes with solid disc brakes in the rear and ventilated disc brakes in the front. The name of the exterior color is White Platinum Metallic Tri-Coat. And it looks really nice. Super sharp when you have the sun reflecting off of it. But here in the front, speaking of reflection, you have some shiny chrome grille there. Looking all nice. So this is a very... The shape of the vehicle is just very impressive to me and the, the lines in the hood there it kind of just gives it a really sleek aerodynamic look. Your headlights are projector halogen powered projector headlights for your low beams and then you have the reflector system there for your high beams. So this is what the key looks like it's an actual proximity key for starting the vehicle, the vehicle will start with a push button start as long as this key fob is in the vehicle. You have the lock and unlock buttons there. You have the ability to get in your trunk, open it up, and then you have a panic button, alarm button there. You do have a physical key on the inside. Just push this button here and it kind of slides out just in case you need to unlock the door if the battery is dead or something like that. There's your emblem there. So you're probably noticing there's no keyhole here for the physical key that's on the inside of the key. Uh, there is actually one hidden under this cover. This actually slides off and there's a keyhole behind there. If you don't want to use the key fob to unlock the doors, you can always use this combination here on the side door. I'm gonna make sure that the vehicle's unlocked by pushing the unlock button there. So let's go ahead and check it out on the inside. Here's the inside of the passenger door. And wow, it has an ebony black interior, but it's accented with this like a titanium color there metallic titanium color and then you have this textured accent here which is looking pretty nice there's your door lock controls power window controls you have a little uh, you have a handle here but you have a little storage pocket here at the bottom place to put your cell phone I guess right there in the front and then you have a bottle holder all soft to the touch all the way around your arm you also have some uh, stitching contrast stitching there there's your threshold, it even says fusion there in the threshold. Then you have a power seat here on the passenger side. Then you have the black cloth seats. Very comfortable seats, by the way. Just really hug your body. The bolsters are not too intrusive. And you have a little texturing here in the center of the seat to kind of keep you in place. You can see it has plenty of leg room, all open space there for the passenger. You also have a little pass-through so they can utilize the, uh, the USB and the power supply there, hidden. Not hidden, but just kind of right there to where everybody can access it. So there's the glove compartment. Now you do have this little accent, the textured accent and the titanium color accents above the glove compartment, which is looking pretty nice. Lockable glove compartment, by the way, but check it out. You have the shelf system in there, so you can try to keep your glove compartment organized. I know it's a challenge. And then you have this little net pocket to kind of have a quick access to your registration and that kind of thing. Before we go too much further, I want to show you the window sticker, just in case you need to get some information off of it by using the pause button. Thirty-four on the highway, twenty-three in the city, not too shabby. Here's the inside of the back door. Similar styling as the front. You also have the soft to the touch surfaces around your arm as well. Bottle holder there. Here's your threshold, and look how far down the floor is. So that way your knees aren't sticking up in the air too much. You do have a pretty mediocre uh, hump there in the center. So you have to uh, take that, that into consideration for center passengers. But overall, the back seats are plenty of room and very comfortable. You do have a center armrest with some cup holders just in case you don't have a center passenger. And that could be, you can move that out of the way in case you need to use that. You also have some vents there and a 12 volt power supply. Take a look at the back of the vehicle looking pretty sharp with the aerodynamic design so back here you have an led tail light system there so that way you're visible day or night 
Then you have the parking sensors, the little round circles here will allow you to, uh, it'll kind of beep at you if you get too close to something as you're backing up, so that way uh, keep you safe. Also, you have the backup camera right here in the center. And then you have a chrome tip tailpipe. So opening up the trunk, you can either use the key or there's a little button just under the Ford emblem, right under here. You just push that. You'll see it right here, hopefully. Then it lifts up about halfway and you just kind of lift it up the rest of the way by yourself. All right, so here's your trunk. Plenty of room back here. You see they try to give you as much room there on, on the sides as possible and all the way back in here. And the seats are a 60-40 split seat system to where you can fold down one or the other to improve your cargo space. And now you can have a combination of cargo and passenger space depending on what you need so that way they're split like that. So let's take a look under here, and there's your spare tire. Your tools are underneath the spare tire. And of course you can utilize some of the space for cargo if you need. And there's a funnel, which we'll get to that in just a minute. Fuel door is on the driver's side, which is super convenient. You just push it like so and open it up. And you can see there's no cap. So you basically just put the nozzle in there, pump your gas, and you're good to go. Now the funnel I just mentioned, uh, is just in case you need to use a gas can. So that way it'll actually put the gas in the tank instead of just spilling in the uh, the reservoir there and the overflow, I mean. So it's just as simple as that. Now you do have a little seal around here to keep just general trash from getting in there, but it's designed to keep things from actually getting in the tank. So to start the vehicle, you just get in the vehicle with the key. You have to have the key. Put your foot on the brake and hold it and push this button. So here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. You can see there's plenty of leg room there. You do have a floor mat that snaps in place to keep it from messing you up as far as your pedals and everything. You have a place to put your left foot there. There's your accelerator and brake pedals there. So let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. So to open the hood, the latch is all the way here to the far right. You can actually see it, hopefully, right in here. It's an orange latch. You just kind of move it to the left and lift up the hood. Now, the hood's fairly light, but it does require a prop. Prop is right there to hold the hood up. So let's take a look under the hood. Now, you'll notice there's the battery, there's your strut towers, and it has a four-cylinder engine. It's a 1.5 liter EcoBoost turbocharged engine that gets 181 horsepower. You see it's mostly covered up with plastic there, but we can kind of see around the edge. Now it's paired to a six-speed automatic transmission and nice and smooth little running engine. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look on the inside of the driver's door. It's just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. You see you have the power window controls, the side mirror controls there, door lock controls. So let's go ahead and roll down the window, see how fast it is. It's a one touch down and a one touch up. And the rear doors are one touch down and one touch up. So that's convenient for roll rolling up and down the windows. All right, so here's your threshold here, and you have a power seat here for the pass for the driver, and you also have a power adjustable lumbar support there. I really like the pattern here in the seats; those are nice. So right in here, you have your headlight controls. You have off parking light. There's your headlights, and then you have an automatic feature. And then here is for your dimmers for your gauges. You can make them brighter or dimmer. And then you have a button there to pop the trunk. So you have a tilt and a telescoping steering column and you can lock it in place with this little lever. It's right here on the right side. So when you're reaching for it, it has to use, use your right hand and you lock it in place when you're finished. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look on the inside. The fun part. There's sleek lines there. So let's go ahead and start here on the steering wheel. Now this one has a synthetic steering wheel with a kind of a leather 
simulated leather texturing here and it's very comfortable and high quality feeling and it's probably impossible to uh to to mess it up it's super durable so as far as longevity that's this is probably the best stuff you can get you have the handles here just overall contours to your hand it has a good thickness too and a little bit of a little bit of softness just so it doesn't dig into your hands while you're driving so you can see it has quite a few buttons so let's go ahead and start over here on the bottom and this is your volume for your radio your voice recognition button your mute button change through your presets for your radio and then you have your Bluetooth phone so like say if somebody once you pair your Bluetooth phone with the system to answer calls you push that button to hang up you push that button and then you have the voice recognition to actually make calls so it'll, it'll actually have access to your phone book and you can just say the person's name and it'll call them so that's really convenient because it keeps your hands on the wheel eyes on the road and you're staying productive we'll get to these buttons here in a minute so over here is your cruise control just turn it on and then you can set it change through your speeds resume and cancel there so these buttons here correspond to these screens so the right one corresponds to the right screen the left one corresponds to the left screen we'll get to those in just a second you have some paddle shifters here on the back of the steering wheel so you can cycle through the six gear ratios if you want to and your windshield wiper controls are there on the right turn signal and your high and low beams are controlled there on the left so here's your gauge or just one gauge is your speedometer there in the center and you have more information in the screen so it just has this, this the simplistic design but then you can get the complexity if you want to in the screens on the right and left okay so here on the left side your fuel gauge always stays up here so you can see this vehicle is headed to the gas station as soon as I get finished with it so let me go ahead and zoom in here so using these buttons here on the left side up and down and OK we can kind of scroll through right now where it says display mode so we can go up and down in this menu system here so I'm going to go into a display mode and you can see it gives your speed so you have a digital speedometer you can scroll down distance to empty scrolling down again will give you your RPMs scrolling down again will give you your coolant, engine coolant temperature as well as your fuel gauge and your RPMs scroll down again you get your tire pressure and then go back down again to your speed so it kind of scroll through kind of scrolls through those options let's go back out of that so then this is where you'll find your trips fuel economy right here it'll give you an average of course that's not accurate because the vehicle hasn't gone anywhere driver assistance this will be like say your traction control and your parking aid your parking sensors in the back you can turn those on and off and then you have a whole slew of settings here vehicle your key and your display setup you can go into there are tons of settings so I'm going to kind of skip over that and for the sake of time but this is would be my default screen here is the digital speedometer that would be mine anyway yours may be different okay so here on the right I'm going to use the right buttons corresponding to this screen so you can see I have a it kind of has a smaller menu but check it out as color coded so you have entertainment in red navigation in green and phone in yellow so the entertainment will show you what your radio is doing navigation will give you right now it's going to give you a uh, just a compass but once you're driving a sp specific route it'll give you some a little bit of guidance there and in the phone this is what your phone will like your caller ID stuff like that will show up here right now there's no phone connected and you also notice that it has your time your digital compass that little W right down there showing you that the vehicle is facing west and then you have your outside temperature 81 degrees okay so we already saw the start button there so let's take a look at the center stack it has a really bright crystal clear touch screen and it's super easy to use you have a home screen button right there a little house and this is it you have a kind of a split between three things your radio your navigation and then you can add things here uh, whatever you want this is a customizable screen but down here at the bottom you have these icons they go to specific screens so your audio push that you can see you have your presets there at the bottom what channel you're on you have lots of different sources for audio so you have AM, FM, satellite radio, 
CD player. That's surprising for a 2017. And then you have the Bluetooth audio. So that's pretty good. Let's go here to climate. This is a, now you do have some redundant buttons down here, but this is where you can adjust your temperature, your fan speed, where you want the air to blow, turn your AC on, that kind of stuff. There's your phone. Once you pair your phone, there's not one paired now, but it'll show up your, your phone book, recent calls, stuff like that. Navigation, let's take a look at the map here. So you can put in a specific address. Let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. We're in Conway, South Carolina at Conway Ford. So we can change it which way we want. And you can put in a, de a destination there. You can search, you can set up your home, your work, have some favorites, previous destinations. You can find f f food and fuel, hotels, ATMs, all that good stuff. And then you have your apps here, Sirius Travel Link, which is really awesome. Let's play with that. So this is where you can find fuel prices, weather. I really like to play around with the fuel prices because you can sort it by uh, price. So if you want to get super cheap, you can save a few pennies and find a, a cheaper gas station. Or you can sort it by distance and find the nearest one. This is really good because if you're in an area that you're not familiar with and you need to find the nearest gas station, this will save a lot of headache. Weather is pretty cool. So that's one of my favorite apps. And then you can connect a uh, mobile app. So like say, um, depending on if you have a iPhone or an Android, you can connect it and utilize uh, the programs on there as well. And then there's a whole bunch of settings here. Set up different phones. I think you can pair up to six phones at a time and it's on a priority system. But that's kind of a basic rundown of the touchscreen, so you can get an idea of how it works. There's a lot more to it, but you don't have to use all of it. It's just there in case you want to use it. And the home screen is pretty, pretty useful, that split screen there. Okay, so down here you have a volume button, tune through the station, CD player, still, still surprising. And there's your eject button. You can change through uh, tracks or channels those buttons there then you have a dual zone climate control with your temperatures here and here and then of course this is redundant because you have the the touch screen as well but you don't always have to use the touch screen you can just quickly access these buttons your fan speed your front and rear defrosters recirculate the air and then you have an automatic feature so you can just set it and forget it okay so down here you have this nice storage space that's really handy and you have a usb charger and a 12 volt battery 12 volt power supply there so you can charge your cell phone or whatever. Place to stand up your cell phone right here is really nice. So you have some cup holders here and I like the way they have it surrounded by chrome. And here's your shifter. It's actually a turn knob. So let's go ahead and put it in reverse so we can take a look at the backup camera. So right there and then you have the active grid lines there as I move the steering wheel. They will also move. Let's give you an idea of which way you're going. Plus you have a green, yellow, and red showing you that you don't want to get too close, you know, kind of, you don't want to be in the red zone, by the way, anyway. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to, well, let's push this button here. And this is going to give you a really close up uh, of the, like, down towards the bumper. Now, this is typically used, like, if you're hooking up a trailer hitch or something like that, hooking up a trailer. Um, this particular vehicle is just focusing in on that. I think this, I think this uh, view is more useful in this particular vehicle. Okay, so we got neutral, and then we have drive, and then you have a sport mode. So this is where you can, you know, really get sporty. It just kind of tells the vehicle that you want the highest performance. And you can also cycle through the gear ratios by using your paddle shifters. So you can see when you start using the paddle shifters, this pops up, and you can, as you push the paddle shifter buttons, or it won't get, let me get out of second gear right now, uh, it'll tell you what gear you're in. So that's handy. All right, so let's go ahead and put it back in park. And this is your parking brake. It's an electronic parking brake. Push it down, push it up to engage it, and then push it down to release it. And then this is your stop-start feature. Basically, this will, you can turn it off, a little off button there. But normally, if you're, if you're it depends. It depends on your, your climate control and different conditions, seat belt, whether, uh, 
you know, it turns off the engine. It actually turn the engine off as you're holding the brake. And as soon as you let go of the brake and push the gas, it'll start right back up so seamlessly you won't even believe it and you'll be good to go again. So if you happen to test drive a vehicle like this and, you, and it turns off at a stoplight, that's what it is. Okay, so here's your center armrest and it's very comfortable. It has some nice give to it and it's wide enough to share with your passenger. And it has two compartments. You have a small compartment here that's felt lined. And you can see it has a little place for the wires to exit in and out of the storage compartment there. You have a place to put a pen. You always have to have your pen with you. So you have a quick access there. Now there's two buttons. One big one, one little one here. So I'm going to use the big button now. And we're going to open up the whole thing. And this is where you'll find another USB and 12 volt charger. And just a storage space here. It's all smooth plastic so it's easy to clean out. And this is why you might need some wires to go in and out. So you can charge your phone or whatever. There's your rear view mirror and it has a manual day and night mode there. You have some tap lights here and here. You can turn on all your interior lights with that button and you can turn it to where as you turn the open up the door the interior lights are turned on with that. You have a place to put your shades right here and it has like a rubberized material on the inside to keep them from getting scratched. And here's your sunroof controls. So the sunroof right up here you have a shade that blocks 100% of the light you can open it up like that you can vent it get some little bit of air in or you can open it up all the way now it rained earlier so hopefully it doesn't drip too much water I'm gonna push it again it goes back a little bit further and of course you can always close it up to block 100% of the light if you want to and that's your controls there. All right, so your visor has mirrors and lights. Let's take a look at the visibility in the back. Now you have those small windows next to the headrest back there with help out. That helps out a lot with your blind spot. It really helps out. Just a little tiny piece of glass there just really helps out. So you can see when you look over your shoulder for your blind spot, that, that's right there. So your visibility is not bad. Alright, there you have it. 2017 Ford Fusion SE. So, I tried to show you as much as I could. And if you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment section. And thank you for watching, and thank you to Conway Ford in Conway, South Carolina, for allowing me to show off an awesome vehicle, and I'll see you guys next time.